Hello everyone, welcome to the lecture again. Today we are going to discuss friction. The equilibrium problem that we have analyzed so far were frictionless, therefore the reaction forces were always normal to the contact surface. However, we know that all the real surface they have friction, therefore they provide a force component that is tangent to the surface and these are called the friction forces. So, let us see what is friction. Whenever there is a tendency for one contacting surface to slide along another surface. the frictional forces develops. And these forces are always in the direction to oppose the motion. Okay. Very basically we can divide these forces into let us say two category. One is the fluid friction and another one is dry friction or sometimes it is also called the coulomb friction. Let me briefly state what is a uh, fluidic friction. So, these fluidic frictions develops when adjacent layer in a fluid moves at different velocities. And uh, the dry friction it occurs when the unlubricated surface or surfaces of two solids. are in contact under a condition of sliding or a tendency to slide. Okay. So, if you have two surface which are in contact and they have a tendency to slide in that case we will have dry friction. Now, let us discuss the static and kinetic friction. To understand this, let us say we have a rough surface and on this surface we have a block of mass m, therefore its weight will be mg which will act downward and let us say we apply a force P along the horizontal. Therefore, to oppose the motion there will be a frictional force F in the opposite direction and of course, the normal force will be perpendicular to the surface. Now, let us see what happens when we increase P. So, as you increase P the frictional forces will increase to oppose the motion and after a certain value of P, 
the motion will start ok. So, up to here let us say the motion has not begun. So, therefore, the body is in equilibrium and of course, this is the friction. So, the maximum value of the friction F max will be mu times n where this mu is the coefficient of static friction. And after a certain value of p as I said the motion will start and the friction will decrease slightly and then it will be constant. So, this is the reason where the motion starts. So, up to here we have equilibrium and then we have motion. This is the point wherein the friction is maxima. So, here we have maximum static friction and this is the point where the motion has just begun. So, therefore, this is also the point where we have impending motion. Okay. Therefore, this reason the friction is static or static friction and in this region we have kinetic friction because the motion has started. Okay. Now, let me also mention that the major cause of friction is the microscopic roughness of the surface of contact and interaction between irregularities. when sliding is present that means, when the motion starts then some of these interactions they decreases. Therefore, you can see that it has decreased slightly and then it is independent of the applied force P. Now, let us analyze the coefficient of friction. For that, let us say we have an inclined plane and it is such that its inclination angle we can change. Let us say on this we have a block of mass m. So, therefore, its weight will be mg. The normal force act perpendicular to the inclination. So, therefore, this angle will also be theta and the frictional forces F will develop to oppose the motion. So, therefore, we can uh, use the condition for equilibrium. So, we have N equal to mg cos theta and the friction force F will be mg sin theta. Let us say that this is equation number 1 and equation number 2. Now, what you do is you start to tilt the angle so that the block just begins to move. Okay. So, what we are doing is now we tilt the plane at a steeper angle. until the block just begin to slide from its own weight. Okay. 
So, we also know that the maximum value of the friction F will be mu s n. This is the maximum friction that is possible. Let us call this equation number A. Then from A and equation number 2, we have mu s n equal to m g sin theta. This is the equation number 2, we have just rewrote it. So, from equation number 1 and 2, you can see that mu s becomes sin theta over cos theta or this becomes tan theta. Here this theta s is called the angle of static friction. Now, you have to note that equation number A is valid only at condition of impending motion or impending slippage. So, when the motion just begin and uh, when the motion is not impending, then the static friction f is always smaller than mu s n. So, here the frictional forces are always smaller then mu and s. So, this is what we wrote when the impending motion is not there in that case the frictional forces will always be smaller than mu and s. And once the motion start then we have kinetic friction. So, similarly you have the definition of kinetic friction. Let us denote it by f k, k for kinetic and this becomes mu k n where this mu k is the coefficient of kinetic friction. Okay. One more point I would like to mention here that this f or the frictional forces you can see that they are independent of the area of the object. So, in all this formalism the area of the object does not come into picture. So, let me mention here that the friction is independent of the area of the object. With this very brief introduction, let us now look at some of the problem based on this concept. So, this is the first problem statement. Determine the range of values which the mass m naught may have so that the 100 kg block shown in the figure will neither start moving up up the plane nor slip down the plane. The coefficient of static friction for the contact surface is 0.3. 
Now, to analyze this, let us first make the free body diagram of the problem. So, we have an inclined plane at 20 degree, we have mass of 100 kg. So, therefore, mg equal to 100 g that will act downwards. We have a normal force which will be perpendicular to the inclination. So, let us say it is n and there is a rope which hangs a mass of m naught. So, therefore, the tension in the rope will be T equal to m naught g and to find out the value of T, let us take our axis along the inclination. So, let us say this is x axis and this is y axis and let us balance the force along the y direction. So, we have n equal to this angle will also be 20 degree m g cos 20 therefore, n will be 9 to 2 Newton. And once we know n, we can find out the frictional forces its maximum value. So, f max will be mu n, mu is 0 0.3 and n we have calculated. So, therefore, it will be 277 Newton. Now, in the question, it has asked to determine the range of values of m naught, so that this block neither moves up nor it goes down. So, let us first calculate the minimum value of m naught. For minimum value of m naught, we can think that the impending motion of the 100 mg block will be downwards. So, therefore, you can say that the motion is impending down. Therefore, the frictional forces will be upward. Okay. So, the frictional forces that will develop, it will be upward. Now, let us balance the force along the x axis. So, we have m naught g force plus we have the frictional force f max and it has to be balanced to the downward force of m g. So, we have m g its component is sin 20 degree. Now, let us put the values. So, we have m naught g is 9.8 plus f max we have calculated it is 277 equal to m is 100, g is 9.8 and then we have sin 20 degree. From here, we can find out what is m naught and m naught comes out to be 6.01 kg. Now, let us calculate the maximum value of m naught. So, for maximum m naught, when the m naught is maximum, then the motion of the 100 kg, you can think of it is going up. So, in this case, the motion is impending up. Therefore, in this case, the frictional forces are going to act downward. So, this will not be there. Now, let us write down the force balance along the x axis. So, let us put summation f x equal to 0. So, we have m naught g minus f max equal to, so this is f max equal to m g sin 20 degree and again the value of f max and m g is known. So, therefore, from here you can calculate m naught it will be 62.4 kg. So, this implies that if the value of m naught is less than 6.01 kg, then the 100 kg block will move downward and when its value is more than 62.4 kg, then the 100 kg block will move upward. Therefore, for the equilibrium, the value of m naught should be between 6.01 to 
to 62.4 kg. Now, let us look at another problem statement and here the problem statement is following. The homogeneous rectangular block of mass m width b and height h is placed on the horizontal surface and subjected to a horizontal force P which moves the block along the surface with a constant velocity it is given that the coefficient of kinetic friction between the block and the surface is mu k and we have asked to determine A, the greatest value which H may have. So, that the block will slide without tipping over. And B, the location of A point C on the bottom face of the block through which the resultant of the friction and normal forces they act if small h becomes capital H by 2. Now, let us look at part A. Herein, we have asked to find out the h max for which the block will slide without tipping. So, let me make the free body diagram. So, you have this block of mass m. So, therefore, m g its height is given h width is b and we are applying a force p to a height h max. So, that the tipping does not happen when the tipping will happen it will happen at this point. Therefore, the normal force will act over here and the frictional force will oppose the direction of the motion. So, therefore, the kinetic friction will be in the opposite direction of P. So, it is given that the block is moving with a constant velocity. Therefore, 
the frictional force kinetic friction f k will be mu k times n and n is nothing but m g therefore, it will be mu k times m g. Now, to find out the value of h max let us take the moment about this point let us call this point a and take the moment about a. So, in that case the contribution of n and f k will go away because they are passing through a. So, we have force p its normal distance is h max equal to m g into the perpendicular distance is b by 2. Therefore, h max will be m g b over 2 p. Now, we can further simplify it because from the free body diagram you can also see that p is equal to f k and f k is mu k m g. Therefore, h max will be m g b over 2 into p is mu k m g and m g will get cancelled it will be b over 2 mu k. Now, in the second part it has asked you to find out the location of the point on the bottom face from which the resultant of the frictional force and normal forces act if h is equal to capital H by 2. So, let me formulate this problem. So, again you have the surface and we have this block its mass is going to act downward. The friction force will act in the opposite direction of p. This height is given it is h by 2 and we have to find out from where the line of f k and n normal force will pass. So, let us say our normal force n act at a distance of x then the resultant of n and f k will also pass through this point. Therefore, if we know where the n is acting we know from where the resultant is passing. So, let us say this point is a this point is c and we have to find out what is the position of normal force. For that what we can do is we can take the moment about A. So, if I do that then I have n into x equal to p into h by 2 the contribution from f k will not be there and m g will also be not there because both of them are passing through point A. Therefore, we get x equal to p h divided by 2 n and again we know that p is equal to f k because we have to balance the force along the x axis and this will be equal to mu into n. Therefore, x will be mu k into n h over 2 n therefore, x will be mu k h over 2. So, therefore, the n has to be passed at a distance of mu h divided by 2 and the resultant will also pass through this point. With this let me stop here see you in the next class. Thank you.